We're live on camera now. Uh, can I just ask, am I, is, is there, yep, yeah, okay, thank you. <clears throat> All right, so a rough sort of thing on conflict and, um, and transcending reactivity, and I'll just put it into my words, not, not being a mug or something <laughs> around situations that you might come across as well. Um, this is a, a great question, and for me, um, it's also got many, many parts I could answer on. But the thing uh, for me is generally as you're doing the spiritual work, you are going up, um, and, and people can go up in level of consciousness and come down at certain points, but generally speaking, um, uh, well I can share it from two points. If you're new to spiritual work, you can expect a lot of situations to come up which are very reactive and triggering which you then just use all the spiritual tools you have in your arsenal to what I call transcend. Transcend, and I love the word transcend, and for me the Course in Miracles is to get to those flow states, those peaceful states, where your ego's not sort of in the, in the way, sort of um, making a story uh, around everything that happens, so you lose those flow, those eternal, uh, eternal leaf flow states. So, so in the beginning, as you, as you want to clear everything in the way of you accessing miracles, ac accessing the flow, accessing the timeless now, whatever you want to call it, everything's going to come up. You know, if, you, if anyone says to, to the Holy Spirit, to God, to the universe, I want to be free of everything that's in the way, then you can expect everything that could be in the way uh, is going to start flying in your face. You know, if you say like, I'm going to be, I commit to being unconditionally loving this week, you should probably get the most unloving people suddenly fly at you in every direction after you just said, I'm going to be loving and nice to everybody this week. The universe, it's like, and that's not, a, it's not necessarily, I mean, you are getting what you asked for, which is like, well, you said, if you say with intention to, the, to God, to the universe, to the Holy Spirit, I want to be free, and your intention is like, I want to be free as quickly as possible then the universe will give you as quickly as possible everything that you need to transcend. Whereas if you're like, I'm, I'm not interested in being free, uh, you might have an easier life. So that's the one thing. So don't, don't, don't be disappointed if when you're doing spiritual work, lots of situations come which trigger you. Now, that's for someone who's new, and you know, all these new things are going to come up, and then you can do the Course in Miracles, pray for a miracle to see it differently, place it into God's infinite light and love, pray for a miracle, cancel your belief that this situation is meaningful, it's not real. Uh, whatever it is, you're just uh, releasing it. If, you can, if you're aware of the tools on the website, uh, feeling the feelings, just feel the energy around it, and then let go of the story around it. Um, and then also, um, uh, also there's the if people are able to do the observer, then just go. What's witnessing? What is witnessing my thinking and my feelings around this situation? Can I detach and be in the observer of the story? So you're just using all of these tools to unhook. Um, as has been shared here today. Um, the general experience of nearly all spiritual students is if you completely unhook from the story, usually a, a major miracle will happen. I mean, I know that when I've completely eliminated 100% of the story and the feelings around a thing, I know it's 100% gone, there has always been, I've never known an ex uh, um, a thing when there hasn't been a major miracle in transformation. Usually things don't happen to the extent I haven't let the story go and the feelings go. To that extent, then things are much slower and there seems to be much more of a, of a track. Now for people who are more advanced, you can get into flow states and then lose it. Uh, that's a different dynamic. And that's because uh, more advanced lessons can be coming along uh, that now the universe thinks you're now ready to handle. You've, you've, you've got to such a state which you're really, really good. And now it's like, okay, you've mastered this stuff. Uh, but okay, you're now ready for the advanced, the advanced spiritual lessons, and so you're given those, and you can lose your spiritual peace, flow states, and come down until this new thing is is done. With uh, reactivity, uh, with reactivity, um, 
the thing I would do is I'd put that um, as a pattern I'd want to transcend. Uh, especially if the reactivity is spontaneous and very, very fast, then for me, I'd be doing, I'd be uh, tackling it on a mul multiple levels. I'd be, uh, pr you know, praying for willingness not to be reactive. I would pray for a miracle to see reactive situations differently. I'd place my reactive nature into, we're on camera, but we'll come to you in a sec. Um, uh, place my um, reactivity into God's infinite light and love and pray for a miracle. You know, the situations which trigger me, I would, I would say are blessings in disguise. So if I've had a, a really triggering interaction with someone, um, like I had, uh, like I actually did have an interacting triggering situation with someone um, this week, you know, with, a, with a, a GP receptionist. So that's like a, that I had this triggering angry situation with the receptionist this week would be a thing, okay, so that's a blessing from the universe saying that you're not done, you know, or, you've, or something is, or a situation has manifested which is going to help me to take me to the next level of transcending. So I would, you know, I actually, and this is like debatable, everyone can have a different view on this, this is my view. My view with uh, situations which trigger me is I prefer, you know, and I'll just repeat, you know, I love Dr. Hugh Len, who um, was a, what I call a mystic, who, who just followed, who goes on, I'm just using my own interpretation, clear the data in your consciousness which has, which has made you go into this situation until it's completely gone, 100% gone. So I, I like more the mystical approach to, to life. Uh, there are other approaches to it. Um, so, and you know, he did that with a prison full of people just by forgiving their criminal files until there was nothing left in his consciousness. And then the whole prison got well and they closed down the prison. And he didn't actually go and meet the people. He didn't like give them therapy and tell them like it's not good to ax murder people. Uh, try, try and forgive them and try and be a nicer human being. He actually didn't even have to meet them. He just did it, did the inner work and they all got better. So I'm a great, you know, and that's not the only way to do spiritual work, but it's the, what, it's the thing of like, okay, I've had a reactive situation. Now sometimes, here's the thing, there's, there's a few things. I was asked this thing about not being a mug, you know, in situations like, some, surely sometimes you have to stand up and have an interaction, you know, like uh, you can't just like, let them walk all over you and run away and do the spiritual work and come back. Otherwise, you'd be taken advantage of. Which, which, which I agree. I agree. Like um, everyone's going to do the best they can in a situation. And if you have to say something, if something unfair is happening, and you have to say something now, then yes, say it. I'm always of the thing of like, if I don't have to say something now, and I can take some time and come back, yeah. if that option is available. I'll always try and take that option. It's like, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, like, what's your response? If you don't give me a response, we're going to sue you and to take you to court. I'll be like, well, can I go away? And, you know, how much time do I have before I can give you an answer? And I will come back to you, but what's the longest you can give me? Or if I have to decide, like, you know, uh, make a decision about something really important, I will, I will leave as much time as possible until making that decision and do as much spiritual work as possible so that I've transcended that situation. So there's no data, there's no emotions around it. So like with, so do say something if you have to, but then I would be, you know, I wouldn't really go, I'm not a big fan, I know this is kind of controversial, of if I don't have to, I, I will spend as much time as possible clearing the energy in me before I go back. I won't really try and, and, and speak to that because I, because this thing, you know, like with Hawkins' research, if I, if I have to have an interaction with someone, I'm holding fear and anger and I have a story in my head, to that extent, the interaction will be influenced by my fear and anger. So uh, Hawkins has written a book called Power Versus Force. Generally, it's a spiritual thing. If I have an interaction with someone, like if I say to somebody, look, you're wrong, and I've got anger and fear, and you did, you were clearly in the wrong, but I have that energy in me. 
there is likely to be an equal and opposite wanting from that person to come back at me. Because even if the words are nice, they, you know, they sense the anger and me trying to control them. So, you know, in some way, and even if they, were, they, they agree, like, I accept I'm wrong and you're right, even if they accept that, that lesson is not transcended in the universe. So I can expect another similar situation to come and bite me on the ass. But, you know, I might have shown intellectual superiority and shown you're wrong, and you might have had to have agreed because, you know, you're wrong, but that's... So in terms of reactivity, yes, so I'm not negating, not saying anything or doing anything, but if I'd be, like, trying to transcend that... If, if I'm going to see that person again, and I have to see them again, I'd be on my ass doing as much spiritual work until I see them. Because to the, the vibration that I meet them again the next time I see them is likely to be influenced by how much I've cleared on that situation. So reactivity... And if there's a recent situation, I'll be specific. Because the universe will understand it and correlate it to all other situations. So if it's like... Uh, I don't know, let me make up a situation. If it was like... I had an interaction, well, I can use a real situation. I had an interaction with a medical worker and I lost my temper. Then, and I, I'm probably, and I might have to, you know, I might actually have to see this person next week. So it's like, okay, I'm going to do my best until next week to sit with any, there aren't any feelings, but pray for a miracle to see it differently. I place this person into God's infinite light and love and pray for a miracle uh, around the situation. And I want to feel like absolute, like there's no story left. And if I was to try and think of this person, there'd just be love and light. As you do that, you'll find that as you clear the baggage in relation to, say, reactivity around a person, you'll start to get more holy thoughts. You'll start to see, you'll feel like a sigh of relief. And when you meet them, uh, the, the interaction is going to be different. Actually, you know, from the Course in Miracles, we're all one. But there is no oneness experienced as long as there is any sort of s separation between your ego and the interaction with them. So, you know, when I've let go of my story and my anger at situation, I've always, as my level of consciousness rises, it's like the Holy Spirit gives you a different way of seeing the situation. You have a higher spiritual perspective. Like, oh my goodness, that person was just doing the best they could at the time. They had bad days, like I had bad days. Actually, they're, actually, now I think they're my holy brother. I've been like that in the past. I'll probably give them a hug and say, look, you know, I understood where you... And actually, I know that as I release that energy, that their interaction to me is going to be totally different to the extent I've let go of my stuff. And I've seen the most awesome things. And you'll meet a person, suddenly their whole energy has changed as your whole energy is, and, and the interaction that you thought you'd have with them a week ago, uh, you think you're going to have a loggerhead, so that, that, that transforms. So pray for a miracle, see them differently. Uh, if you're doing the Course in Miracles, do all of them. Instead of this situation, I could see peace. I cancelled it. You know, if, if uh, some of my tips I learned with my mother, if there's certain things that they triggered in you, you could be specific on placing those into God's infinite light and love. Like, his tone of voice was awful, the way he spoke to me. So I place his tone of voice into God's infinite light and prayer. His facial expression, he looked like he was telling me off. So I place his facial expressions into God. And you'll actually be surprised. I find that when I make things meaningless, little aspects, and I meet them, those things tend to trigger me less. Like it's like I'm not even picking up their facial expressions. I'm more in the observer. I'm not really picking up their tone of voice. So you're transcending these little aspects which you used to do. You find as you transcend it, um, if it's something like reactivity, I would go to town on, like, I pray for a miracle not to be reactive in future situations. I pray to the Holy Spirit for a, a gap between my reactivity and, and speaking. I also to pray to make reactivity different. The last thing I'll say is, there is a thing, and I share a lot about it in here, which is spiritual discernment. Uh, in the early days, if you're very new to spiritual work, you can think like you should love your brother, and even if your brother slaps you on the face and steals your money, you should still, I mean, you should still forgive them, but it doesn't mean you need to be done. You know, it doesn't mean you, you can, I, I, so I sort of say, because the miracle says trust your brother, 
But I would say, uh, yeah, trust your brother, forgive your brother, but don't be dumb. Which is ba basically, yeah. I'm going to come in with something I've just thought of in the Bible that seems quite contradictory in okay. this respect, and yeah. it possibly isn't. Yeah. So there's a very, the very famous saying of Jesus is, um, turn the other cheek. Yes. So as in, if you, if you get a slap, just like, like suffer it. But yeah. then the other, there's another saying in the Bible, it's like, if your brother sins against you, rebuke him. If he prays for forgiveness, or he asks for forgiveness, then accept him back. Yeah. But every time he's, but if he continues, so it's like, oh, so there seems to be a little bit of uh, conflict between those two. Thank you, th th thank you for bringing that yeah. up. Thank you for bringing that up. And uh, that's a great question. And Hawkins talks a lot about this. There are different stages of spiritual recovery. There are different contexts where it seems like the advice would be totally the opposite of what you'd give someone else at a later stage of recovery. So you're quite right, so thank you for bringing it up. Because I can say something, I'm talking to somebody in a certain context, mm. and I'm usually picking up where they're at and what the situation, what the lesson is. And so if you listen to what I say, it can seem like it's the wrong advice for someone else. And that's 100% true, because you have to take the stage of recovery and the lesson that's being presented at the time. So you're quite right. Sometimes the universe is asking you to let the person slap you around a bit, sit mm. metaphorically. And the lesson of growth is for that not to let you affect them and to hold a level of love. But at another stage, it can be not to let them to get away with that. But still, I mean, always for me it is to love and forgive. But the actions in the world sometimes can be like, you're just going to forgive them. Maybe not call them up and just let them, you know, okay, you know, today you had, you know, there was... There was a donut for me, and there was a donut for you, and you ate, you ate both donuts today. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to say anything. I'm not, I'm not going to. I'm, I'm going to turn the other cheek and let you get away with having the extra donut today. So that, at a certain stage of spiritual development, that is the thing. Don't mention that they're greedy today and they had an extra donut. Just let them get away with it, and that's the right thing. Another time in spiritual recovery. It's like the right thing to do is like, you still want to forgive them and love them. They've eaten both of the donuts. There's one for me and one for them. And you say, look, like this is not on, you know, like leave a donut for me tomorrow. I just have one donut. And that would be the right thing at a certain stage of spiritual growth. So they're both like contradictory seemingly bits of advice, but they are contextually different lessons at different stages. So that's a really good point. Um, <clears throat> sometimes it is like turn the other cheek and let them have the donut and don't say anything to them. And it's about forgiveness and tolerance and, and trusting the universe. And sometimes the lesson is like, okay, you've been eating the, both donuts for the last five days. Like, you've got to stop with that. <laughs> and <laughs> let them keep a donut. For you. So they're contra seemingly contradictory <laughs> stages. If I hadn't of died from lack of blood sugar, I would actually hit from here. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually fight you for the moment. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you.